I'm John Netta with MoneyShow.com. I'm joined today by an icon and a legend of the trading industry, John Bollinger from Bollinger Capital Management. John, thanks for joining us. Oh, my pleasure entirely. John, talk to me about your Bollinger Bands. They are the most iconic technical indicator in the market. What was the inspiration for creating them? Well, in the old in, when I started, um, we used fixed width trading bands, percentage bands as they were called, and they're not adaptive to changing market conditions, so we were always forced to, tr to redraw them to try to fit the new market conditions. And there's a problem with that. When you redraw them, if you're bullish, you draw a bullish picture, and if you're bearish, you draw a bearish picture. So you let your emotions into the trading process, which is always a no-no. So what I was trying to do is find a way to automate the setting of the width of the band. So as market conditions changed, the bands would change with the market. I was an option trader at the time, so I was thinking about volatility, and one day I realized we could use volatilities to set the width of the bands. And after a little bit of trial and, trial and experimentation, um, out came the Bollinger Bands. So at Bollinger Capital Management, you not only use the Bollinger Band aspect, but generally speaking, what is your general strategy um, when you manage investor capital? So an important piece of our puzzle is group and sector rotation. Um, stocks tend to move in packs, uh, all the tech stocks together, all the financial stocks together. Uh, and all, people on, often only think of them as the big macro sectors, sure. um, finance or utilities or basic materials, something like that. But if you, you, if you look a little closer inside those, inside those sectors, there are interesting industries groups and, and the, the, where stocks share common characteristics. We found that to be very, very important piece of the puzzle from the, from the very beginning of our uh, experience. So group and sector rotation is a, is a big piece of our puzzle. Um, relative strength, um, we want to own uh, things that are actually doing really well. We're sort of the, in, in a way, we're sort of the opposite of value investors. Value investors will keep on buying something as it goes down and gets cheaper and cheaper. That's fine with with us, but um, we want to wait until it stops going down and actually starts going back up. And as soon as it starts to build up some relative strength, then we're interested in. It. I guess the bottom line you could say is that we're interested in listening to the song of the market. Outstanding. For someone who is just getting acclimated to your Bollinger Bands or other technical analysis out there, as someone who's an icon of technical analysis, what advice would you have for them? Well, you know, the big, th the, the big killer of traders uh, um, and investors is discipline. Sure. So, you know, the first thing is, is you have, to, you have to know yourself and you have to be able to be disciplined in order to be successful in this business. I, I understand that it's, that, that has nothing to do with technical analysis. Um, it's purely a psychological issue, but it's, it's incredibly important. People think that they can just approach this casually, but it's a job. It's a full-time job that you have to be engaged with. Um, so discipline is paramount. After after that, we find that technical analysis that it is a great way to uncover the message of the markets. And the markets know what's going on in the economy. They know what's going on with monetary policy. They know what's going on um, with industrial policy around the world. So if you if you focus on, on on what's happening in the markets, you can actually learn a lot about what's happening in the world. So you've mentioned a couple of events or a couple of broader um, analysis tools, macroeconomics, global events. How do you, or what process do you put in place when you're aware of a big event, let's say a Fed event is coming out, or a Brexit event is coming out, that may produce a non-linear reaction in price? What sort of um, processes do you look at to, to have technical analysis account for maybe this one-off event? So if there's, a, if there's really a lot of uncertainty uh, uh, coming up and we, we can't figure out which, what the probable resolution is going to be, then we just back off. We, 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 we raise some cash and, and reduce positions, maybe um, put some hedges on, um, something like that. But the truth is, is that for most events, if you actually pay attention to the markets, the markets will tell you how, what the event's going to be. For example, we're coming up on Brexit. So what do we want to focus on? We want to be looking at the, the FTSE index. Sure. We want to be looking at, at the German, German stock index, sure. the DAX. Sure. We, and even more importantly, we want to be looking at the smaller Spanish stocks, Italian stocks, sure. and such like that. And you, you can more or less figure out what's going to happen. 90% of the time. Great words from an industry legend. John Bollinger from Bollinger Capital Management. Thank you for joining us today, sir. Oh, thank you for having me on. I'm John Netter from MoneyShow.com.